Welcome to section 5.1, Properties of Exponents. Exponential notation is a very basic idea. It's nothing more than a shorthand for repeated multiplication. It consists of two pieces, a base and an exponent. The base is what is actually being multiplied. The exponent tells you the number of times that you multiply. The exponent is always seen as a superscript that's attached to the base. Now when you see an expression like this, you need to translate that to an English phrase in your head. So this would actually translate as x to the fourth. Sometimes we say x to the fourth or x to the fourth power. Now what you mean by that is x times x times x times x. You're multiplying x as the base a total of four times. When you see an expression like this in your mind, you're translating that to the phrase x to the seventh. And what you actually mean by x to the seventh is x times x times x times x times x times x times x. And if you count those out, you're actually multiplying the x one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. The first property that we see when we're multiplying when we're using exponential notation is when we're multiplying like bases. So suppose that we have an expression like x squared times x cubed. How do we actually evaluate this? Well, not having a formula yet, we simply use the definition of exponential notation. x squared meaning x times x. x cubed meaning x times x times x. Now, the only operation that we have is multiplication, so we're free to drop the parentheses. The question for you is what property allows us to just drop the parentheses. When we drop them, we see x times x times x times x times x. Again, coming back to exponential notation, this is really x to the fifth power. So our question then becomes, can we find some way of connecting x squared times x cubed to get x to the fifth. This leads us to the multiplying like bases property. When multiplying like bases, we keep the base the same and add the exponents so that x to the n times x to the m is equal to x raised to the n plus m. We've got a total of n things in the first set of parentheses and m things in the second set of parentheses so we have a grand total of n plus m things that we're multiplying. So coming back to our example when we have x squared times x cubed that's x raised to the 2 plus 3 2 plus 3 gives us 5. The next property that we see is dividing like bases. So now suppose that we have something like x to the fifth power divided by x to the third power. Again, not having a formula for this yet, we simply use the definition of exponential notation and write out what we mean by x to the fifth power and x to the third power. You're multiplying x five times in the numerator and three times in the denominator. Well, the most natural thing to do at this point is to start canceling common x's, numerator and denominator. So we're able to cancel three x's in the numerator and denominator, leaving us with x times x. But what we mean by exponential notation, this is x squared. So just like before, we say, how do we start with x to the fifth divided by x to the third and end up with x squared? Well, that nice property is the dividing like basis property, which really says that we keep the base the same and subtract the exponents in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. 
So you can think about this as really saying, well, what's the extra number of x's or what's the extra number of um, bases that I have in the numerator than I have bases in the denominator? Because for every base that I have in the denominator, I'm going to cancel one of those out. So how many will I have left? It's the difference between the numerator and the denominator. Using that formula, we have x to the fifth divided by x to the third. We subtract the exponents, 5 minus 3, to give us x squared. The next property that we have is the zero exponent rule. The zero exponent property says that for any real number x, as long as x is not zero, that we have x raised to the zero power is one. Now where does this actually come from? It's a consequence of dividing like bases. So that as long as x is not zero, we actually have one is equal to x over x, anything divided by itself is 1. But x is really x to the first power. So when we have x to the first power divided by x to the first power, our dividing like bases formula tells us to subtract the exponents. So this is x raised to the 1 minus 1 or x to the 0 power. Our next property of exponents is the power to a power property. So now suppose that we have an expression like x squared raised to the fourth power. Again, not having a formula yet, we're trying to motivate what the formula actually says. We have x squared raised to the fourth power. By the definition of exponential notation, this is really just x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. The x squared is the base that we're multiplying, and this tells us that we're multiplying the base a total of four times. Now, what we mean by x squared is just x times x. x times x, x times x, x times x. So how you're actually seeing this is we've got four packets four packets being the number of times that we're multiplying, and inside each one of those packets we have two x's. So because the operation is only multiplication, we can drop the exponent, we can drop the parentheses, so that we end up multiplying a to x a total of eight times. Four packets, two things to a packet, gives us a total of four times two, eight x's. This really is the power to a power property. The power to a power property says that if we keep that taking a power to a power, we keep the base the same and we multiply the exponents. M is the number of packets. We've got n things in each packet. So how many total things do you have? n times m. Applying this to our problem above, we had x squared raised to the fourth power. We multiply the exponents, and sure enough, we get x to the eighth power. Now we come to the product to a power formula. Suppose we have an expression like x times y raised to the fourth power. Again, just like before, we've come back to the definition of exponential notation, which is that now our base, x times y, we multiplied a total of four times. Now, the only operation we have is multiplication, so we can drop the parentheses to make it x times y, x times y, x, y, x, y. But we are able to rearrange and put all of the x's together. We can rearrange and put all of the y's together so that coming back to exponential notation, this looks like x to the fourth power times y to the fourth power. So that our product to a power formula says that the power appears to distribute to both terms in the product. Now, the key thing here is that it is a product inside the parentheses. This would not work if it were addition or subtraction. It only works with multiplication or division. 
So then we have the quantity x times y raised to the n power. Then that power distributes to become x to the n times y to the n. For the quotient to a power, we start with an expression that looks like x divided by y quantity to the fourth power. Again, what do we mean by x divided by y to the fourth power? Well, x divided by y is our base, and we're actually multiplying that four times. Now, just multiplying fractions, we multiply numerators, we multiply denominators. So this becomes x times x times x times x in the numerator, y times y times y times y in the denominator. Coming back to exponential notation, this is just a shorthand for x to the fourth divided by y to the fourth. So what's the punchline for our quotient to a power? Again, the power appears to distribute to both terms in the quotient. x divided by y to the n power is x to the n power divided by y to the n power. The, the exponent appears to distribute to both the numerator and the denominator. Now we come to the topic of negative exponents. Now we'll visit negative exponents again in the very next section. In fact, that's the title of the next section, negative exponents. But because it actually appears in this particular section, we'll go ahead and talk about it now. Negative exponents, how you deal with negative exponents, is also a consequence of dividing like powers. When we have some problem like x divided by x squared, one way to do this, we can see that we'll just cancel x's. We're multiplying, we've got one x in the numerator, two x's in the denominator. Canceling an x just gives us an answer of one over x. Now if we use the dividing like basis formula, we've got an exponent one in the numerator, an exponent two in the denominator, so that when we subtract, x to the one minus two gives us x to the negative one power. So what this really means is that one over x is exactly the same thing as x to the negative one power. Now in general, what this means is that as long as x is not zero, so that we don't have a zero in the denominator, if you have x to the negative n power, that's the same thing as one over x to the n power. Now comes a warning that a convention that our particular book adopts is a convention that your answers should not be written with negative exponents. It actually says this on page 286. Now, what I want you to know is that there is no mathematical reason for this. Your answers with negative exponents are just as math mathematically valid and just as correct as they would be without negative exponents. However, Course Compass and the book will count them incorrect only because of this arbitrary convention. I understand you may, see, you may think that this is unfair because there's no mathematical reason for it. However, it is as it is and we have to accept it and go on as a consequence. The last property that we have dealing with negative exponents, suppose we have x not equal to zero and y not equal to zero. When we have the quantity x divided by y to the negative n power, we can simplify that by just taking the reciprocal of the base so that we flip it over, y becomes the numerator, x becomes the denominator, and the exponent changes sign. Now we can put all of those formulas together on one slide so that we see we have multiplying like bases, we add the exponents, dividing like bases, subtract the exponents, 
a power to a power, you multiply exponents. The quotient to a power, the power distributes to the numerator and denominator. A quotient to a negative exponent, we take the reciprocal of the base and change the sign of the exponent. x to the 0 power is going to be 1. And x to the negative n power becomes 1 over x to the n. Now let's work some examples. Suppose that we have y to the negative fifth power. Because of the convention that we just mentioned on the previous slide, the only thing that we can do to simplify this expression is to make the exponent positive. So y to the negative fifth is in the numerator. We put it in the denominator and make the exponent positive. So our final answer, 1 over y to the fifth. In the next example, suppose we have x to the fourth raised to the negative 2. Now we can use the power to a power property. Power to a power property says that we multiply the exponents. So we have 4 times a negative 2 to give us negative 8. Now because that exponent is negative, we have to make it positive by taking x and putting it in the denominator so that our final answer 1 over x to the 8th. In this example we have y to the 6th divided by y to the negative 8. We can see that we can use the dividing like basis property so that we subtract the exponents. So y to the 6th divided by y to the negative 8 becomes y to the 6th minus a negative 8. Remember to bring the negative on the 8. So 6 minus a negative 8 is 6 plus 8. So we have a final answer of y to the 14th. If we have 7 to the 5th times 7 to the negative 3, again, multiplying like bases, so we add the exponents, 7 to the 5th plus a negative 3. So 5 plus a negative 3 is 7 to the 2nd power. But because it's a number, we can actually figure out what it is. So 7 times 7 gives us 49. In this case, we want to simplify 3 fifths to the negative 2 power. Using the negative exponent property, we can take the quotient 3 fifths and take the reciprocal of it to become 5 thirds, and we make our exponent positive. Now, we can use the quotient to a power property so that the power distributes to the numerator and the denominator, so we have 5 squared divided by 3 squared. Since these are numbers, we we're able to figure out exactly what they are. 5 times 5 gives us 25 in the numerator. 3 times 3 gives us 9 in the denominator. So we have, as a final answer, 25 ninths. If we want to simplify 7 to the 5th times 7 to the negative 3, multiplying like bases, 7 to the 5th times 7 to the negative 3, we add the exponents. 5 plus a negative 3 gives us 7 squared. 7 times 7 is 49. Suppose we have to simplify 4x to the 4th, y to the 7th, z to the 3rd, divided by 32x to the 5th, y to the 4th, z to the 9th. The first thing we can do is use the dividing like basis property. So the numbers just stay as 4 over 32. But then the exponents we can subtract. x to the 4 minus 5, y to the 7 minus 4, and z to the 3 minus 9. Which, simplifying the numbers, 
uh, canceling a 4 numerator denominator, we have 1 eighth times x to the negative 1, y to the third, z to the negative 6. Now because we, um, because the book doesn't want us to have negative exponents, because of our convention, we write only the variables with the negative exponents we take the reciprocal of. We put them in the denominator. So we've got a 1 eighth, the eighths already in the denominator. The x, because it's to the negative 1 power, goes to the denominator and becomes x to the first. y to the third stays in the numerator because its exponent is positive. z to the negative 6 goes to the denominator and becomes z to the sixth, giving us a final answer of y cubed divided by 8xz to the sixth. Now we want to simplify 4c to the third d to the second times the quantity 2c to the fifth d to the third raised to the second. The first thing that we can do is using the product to a power property, we can take the exponent 2 and distribute it to each term in the parentheses. So that we have the 4c cubed d to the second doesn't change because the exponent 2 is only attached to the 2c to the fifth d to the third. So the exponent 2 distributes to the 2 and we have 2 to the second. The exponent 2 distributes to the c to the fifth, so we've got c to the fifth to the second, and the exponent 2 distributes to the d to the third, giving us d to the third to the second. Now we can use the power to a power property, so the 2 times 2 simplifies to the 4. c to the 5 to the second, we multiply the exponents, so 5 times 2 gives us c to the tenth the d to the third to the second, again multiplying the exponents, three times two gives us d to the sixth. Now we can use the multiplying like basis property so that we have four times four to give us sixteen. c to the third times c to the tenth, we add the exponents, so that becomes c to the three plus ten. d to the second times d to the sixth, Again, we add the exponents, so it becomes d to the 2 plus 6, or 16c to the 13th power, d to the 8th power.